The year is 2010 and Sonic's reputation is in the toilet. Over the past five years, every Sonic game that was released was either an unfocused mess and on rails wagglefest or Sonic 06. Except for the Rush games, those were actually pretty reasonably alright. Outside of Sonic, things weren't looking too good for Sega either. Super Monkey Ball fell off the same bridge Sonic did, poor sales of Virtual Fighter 5 ended up tossing the series into the vault, and even the shining lights of Sega, Yakuza and Puyo Puyo fell under the radar in the West and didn't leave Japan respectively. And even their latest games at the time were some of the most polarizing titles. Needless to say, Sega needed to find a solution, and fast. The result was two Sonic games. First was Sonic 4, a game I'd rather not talk about, but more importantly was Sonic Colors, a game released exclusively for the Wii that sought to address as many complaints towards the more recent games as it possibly could. The game was both a critical and commercial success, so mission accomplished, but does it hold up today? That's what we're gonna find out. An HD remaster for Sonic Colors was announced back in May for Nintendo Switch, PS4, and Xbox as part of the first Sonic Central, a presentation that was clearly shown much earlier than it was meant to. Featuring an early build of this game, a bare-bones teaser for the next main game because gameplay wasn't ready to show off, and an upcoming collection of the classic games showing footage from the Apple TV versions, and in Sonic 3's case, emulated Genesis footage. Not to mention this graphic that was clearly slapped together with a quick Google image search. Hate to break it to you, Sega, but Sonic CD's box art looks like this. The differences are subtle if you don't know what to look for, but still. Between all this, it's pretty obvious the presentation was only shown off when it was because certain Sonic fans were getting impatient that the next game was taking a normal amount of time to be developed for a change. Takashi Izuka himself even confirmed it, though supposedly this game was meant to be released late last year but ended up getting delayed because a bunch of people got sick for some reason. According to Sega, they wanted to remaster an older game with the intent of drawing in new players and deemed Sonic Colors to be the most beginner-friendly title. I'd argue Sonic 2 is a better entry point, but we have Sonic Origins on the way, so I won't make a big deal out of it. Development was outsourced to a studio called Blind Squirrel Entertainment. These guys are known for remastering games, but from what I've heard, their reputation is a bit spotty. Now let's take a look for ourselves. I'm going to be primarily looking at Sonic Colors Ultimate, but I'll be judging the game as a whole here, not just what's different from the original. And I won't be talking about the DS version in this video, that's for another time. Also, just note that I got the PS4 version of the game. I don't own an Xbox, and I've heard horror stories about the Switch version featuring an abnormally large amount of glitches, most notably the graphics freaking out. But then we find out that many of the bugs were the result of people playing the game in an experimental emulator. Stay classy, Sonic fans. Except then it turns out only one person was doing that which made it so no one could trust anything anymore and it just made this worse for everyone. Seriously, don't play the Switch version, especially if you have epilepsy. Alright, let's get started with Sonic Colors Ultimate. Eh, those poses look familiar. Well, I must say, this is a great start to the game. Just press start and then BOOM! The longest loading screen you've ever seen. Hang on, let's see how fast the Wii version loads. <laughs> Gotta say, Blind Squirrel, you really nailed the first impressions here. Excuse me while I just... The really weird thing is that it's just the first stage that does this. Every other stage loads much faster, and not only that, but if you go back and replay the first stage, it too loads a lot faster. What the fuck happened? Now the story is very simple. Dr. Eggman has built a giant intergalactic theme park, supposedly out of remorse for all of his evil schemes. Naturally, Sonic and Tails aren't buying it, so they decide to head over there to investigate. Obviously, the entire thing is a front for his latest plan to take over the world using these aliens called Wisps. Now it's up to Sonic to free the Wisps and send Eggman packing for the 19th time. Needless to say, this is a very basic and self-contained story, kind of like an episode of a Saturday morning cartoon. At the time this game came out, it was a real breath of fresh air after the likes of Shadow the Hedgehog and Sonic 06, stories that among other issues absolutely took themselves too seriously. Unleashed was already a step in the right direction, but after six games where the final boss was some giant monster thing, a breeder plot with a more comedic edge was exactly what we needed. Now if only the jokes were actually funny. There are no lines, and I've saved the best rides for last! At least let me stab your hand so you can come back in! I know you're trying to be clever with this whole amusement park pun thing, but it's just coming off lame. Let's just say you're going to destroy us and stop embarrassing yourself. Curse you, Sonic! Not only do you foil my plans, but you foil my speeches as well! I work hard on them! A lot of the comedy is extremely low-brow, and the writers constantly run their jokes into the ground. 
Sonic is probably the worst here. It's just bad joke after bad joke, and he never lets up once. I'll give him props for having more character than the flat nice guy we had in the past few games before this, but it doesn't change the fact that he's flat out annoying in this. Though thankfully after this game he improves a little bit, though nowhere near as good as he was in the OVA or Dreamcast games. There are a couple highlights here and there. Eggman's PA announcements you hear throughout the game are hilarious, and Sonic directly responding to a random copyright disclaimer from Eggman with the well-known No copyright law in the universe is going to stop me! is a gag I still get a chuckle out of. Not to mention this is the game that gave us Orbot and Cubot, who I'm really glad have gone on to be mainstays since. These guys are great, but for the most part, it's the kind of stuff only 7-year-olds can really appreciate. I hear a lot of people referring to the jokes as meta-humor quite often to the point that the term meta-era has been coined to describe the past decade of Sonic games, but there aren't very many jokes that I could describe as meta. At best, there's just this one. He's from a race of beings called Wisps. Wisps? No, Wisps, with a W. Yeah, I'll just stick with aliens if that's okay with everybody. Same goes for games after this. Meta humor is really only a thing with the social media page and to a lesser extent the Sonic Boom Show, but this is a discussion for another video so I'll drop it for now. Outside of the writing, the cutscene's animation quality is passable. Nothing spectacular, but it's alright. Pretty damn good for the Wii, all things considered. Also, this is the first game to have Roger Craig Smith as the voice of Sonic, and everyone else has new voices as well, well except for Eggman, who's still played by Mike Pollock. This cast, who are still playing the characters to this day, are by far the best the series has had. I personally prefer the OVA voices, that's not a joke by the way, it's actually a preference of mine, but as far as voice direction and acting go, these guys went hands down. Some of them sounded a little off at first, but they've improved tremendously since then. Interestingly, Tails would later go on to be voiced by Colleen Biller, but since he was played by Kate Higgins here, they brought her back for the one or two new lines that Ultimate has. Now let's get into the game itself. The game is largely modeled after the daytime stages in Sonic Unleashed, containing fast, confined, adrenaline-filled gameplay designed to keep things moving. Sonic still has the boost, but instead of rings, the gauge is powered by white wisp sound and capsules scattered throughout the stages, so it's not nearly as spammable. Interestingly, in Ultimate, the homing attack has been altered a little so that if you press the button at the right time, it gets this neat rainbow effect that also gives you more energy for your boost. It's a nice incentive to practice your timing, but I can do without the sound it makes when you pull it off. <laughs> What really got on me though has to be the button mapping. For some reason the boost and slide have been mapped to the opposite buttons of each other in comparison to Generations and Forces. I made sure to fix that as soon as I noticed it, so just a warning on that. For the original Wii version, the mapping isn't as much of a concern since I play it with the GameCube controller, which is a very different layout than the DualShock. The level design is a step up from Unleashed, though not by much. There's a lot less hallway design here, but that's only because it spends a lot of time in a 2D perspective. There's a bit more going on in the levels because of it, but the design itself in these 2D sections is very bland, so I can't truly call it an improvement. Not helping that each stage has six acts, but four of them are just sections of the other two with little gimmicks about them, clearly added in for the sake of padding. Still, there's a little exploration to be had here and there. You can find red rings, which there are five of scattered throughout the stage. This was the first game to have these, and getting them unlocked stages in the Sonic Simulator, more on that later. You can also find big clusters of rings, and if you're playing Ultimate, there's these gold coins that can be used to purchase gloves and shoes with different designs, but I'm pretty sure they're just cosmetic. Also exclusive to Ultimate are Tails saves. Basically, get one of these and you can have Tails save your ass if you fall in a pit, though in a game like this, that shouldn't happen too often. Oh, and of course there are the Wisp Capsules. So the Wisps are this game's central gimmick, or at least they were, until Sonic Team saw fit to bring it back in every mainline game after this one. <laughs> Basically, you get one and can do all kinds of new tricks based on the color of Wisp you got. White Wisp fill up your boost gauge, not much else to say about that. Cyan Wisp lets you blast off in a laser, ricocheting off anything you come into contact with. Yellow Wisp lets you dig through the ground to find hidden goodies and alternate routes. It reminds me a lot of Nights into Dreams. Blue Wisps turn these blue cubes into coins and vice versa. Thank God, wouldn't be a Sonic game without that one. Green Wisps lets you slowly hover upward for a short period of time. It's kind of like using Tails to fly in Sonic 3 or Mania. What's interesting about this one, though, is that when near a trail of rings while hovering, you can do the Lightspeed Dash, a move that is otherwise completely omitted from this game. Orange Wisps lets you rocket into the sky and slowly free fall to the floor. The pink wisp turns you into a spiky ball that sticks to the walls and ceiling, but you can also use the spin dash with it, which again cannot be used in this game otherwise. Why? The purple wisp turns you into this monster on a rampage, which is kind of fun to use in 2D, but is super clunky in 3D. Lastly, exclusive to Ultimate is the Jade Wisp, which allows you to pass through walls by locking onto an object on the other side. You unlock wisps as you play through the game, and after you unlock them, you can visit previous stages and use them to explore areas you couldn't reach before. I don't really bother though, because I don't find the stages interesting enough to warrant exploring them. 
Actually, let's get into the stages real quick. Tropical Resort is like a giant lobby area. It's a pretty unique looking first stage, but it's still just as easy. Sweet Mountain is an interesting junk food aesthetic, but it doesn't really do anything with it. Starlight Carnival is rocking a ton of spectacle, but it's lacking in the level design department. Fun to look at, kind of boring to play. Planet Wisp is really cool in the way the nature aesthetic clashes with the construction site area. This place is fun. Aquarium Park is the obligatory water level with a really cool Japanese aesthetic to it. Lastly is Asteroid Coaster. This one also has a lot of spectacle, but it's an absolute blast to play, probably my favorite. Aside from the regular stages, you can also check out the Sonic Simulator, a collection of 21 stages that you unlock as you collect red rings. The weird thing about these levels is that some of them have their design ripped directly out of Sonic 1. Look at this, this is clearly Spring Yard. Unfortunately, the blocky look of the place gets really old after a while. If you can beat every one of the stages here, you can unlock Super Sonic, you can play as in regular stages for the first time in a 3D Sonic game. I didn't bother, didn't feel like hunting for the red rings, but it's still cool that it's here. Collecting enough red rings will also unlock Rival Rush, a mode exclusive to Ultimate. Basically, you race Metal Sonic through various stages. I only unlocked the one in Asteroid Coaster, but holy shit, these can be hard. The game is really easy for the most part, so if you're looking for a challenge, I highly recommend checking this out. A boss against one of Eggman's giant mechs appears at the end of every stage, as per usual. Gotta admit though, these bosses aren't very good. They're not very hard, they tend to go down pretty quickly, and you fight each boss twice for some reason, with the second one only being slightly harder than the first. Like, yeah, let's fight the Ferris wheel guy again, only this time he has lasers! Yay! Look how quickly I beat him, too. Special exception goes to the final boss. I love seeing Eggman utilizing the Wisp's powers himself to attack you, and it's just a really exciting fight. I would love it even more if Sonic Lost World and Sonic Forces didn't reuse this fight for their own final bosses. What, is it required by law that any Sonic game directed by Morio Kishimoto have this as the final boss? In terms of graphics, the original Wii version looks damn good for the hardware it's on. The Wii was not an HD console. 480p was the best you were getting out of this, but it still managed to look amazing in spite of that. Ultimate actually is in HD, but the lighting seems very off a lot of the time. Not always, but very often, and god damn it, lay off the fucking bloom, it looks like Twilight Princess in here. This remaster doesn't look as good as it could, but it's acceptable. The music is great, but being a Sonic game, this was to be expected. It's far from my favorite soundtrack in the series, but it's still really good. My favorite tracks are Planet Wisp, Asteroid Coaster, the final boss theme, and especially Aquarium Park. Ultimate went out of its way to remix most of the songs in the game, but these remixes are pretty hit and miss. When they're good, they're really good, but I often can barely tell the difference from the original, and some just sound flat out bad. If you're watching this video, you're probably asking, Evan, what about the glitches? To which I can safely say that I didn't really encounter very many. For clarification, I played this on a base PS4. I'm not paying for a pro, this thing works great. Anyway, the PS4 version maintained a smooth 60 FPS, like the frame rate didn't drop once. The only glitch I'd encountered was that on rare occasions, the music for certain wisps wouldn't play, and the result screen did this too every now and then. I know that the Switch version on release was apparently a dumpster fire, with a memory leak causing graphical glitches, among several other things I've seen. It's been fixed since, but regardless, this is a pretty nasty state to release your game in. I've seen people blame Sega for rushing Blind Squirrel games regularly, comparing it to what they did to Big Red Button when they made Rise of Lyric. Here's why I don't think this is the same as back then. Firstly, Rise of Lyric was not handled by Sega of Japan, but rather Sega of America, in a time where they were constantly pushing out shovelware. The critical and commercial failure of the game led to a massive downsizing at Sega of America. They can't even make games anymore, they don't even localize them anymore, that's Atlas West's job now. Beyond publishing localized games, they're pretty much just the Sonic pillar and not much else, so I don't see another Sonic Boom situation happening anytime soon. Secondly, some Glassdoor reviews on Blind Squirrel strongly suggest that their higher-ups constantly screw over both their employees as well as their clients, regularly releasing their remastered games in an unfinished state and then fixing them later. But nah, they totally believe in a healthy work-life balance. That's not to say Sega is completely innocent. I mean, at the end of the day, they are ultimately the ones who decided to outsource this to the studio that gave us WWE 2K18. I get the feeling that if Sonic Team had worked on this, the game would have come out much better. Like, say what you will about Sonic Forces, but it's still a really well-optimized game. Even the Switch version doesn't have much wrong with it besides a half frame rate. I understand Sonic Team was probably too busy working on Puyo Puyo Tetris 2 as well as the upcoming mainline Sonic game to also be able to make this, but it was something I just couldn't help but think about. Anyway, Sonic Colors is by no means a masterpiece, but it's still an okay game. The remaster, on the other hand, is definitely a little shoddy, but I imagine that in time with updates on the way, it could be the definitive version of the game. Give it some time. Right now, though, if you really want to play Sonic Colors and you haven't bought Ultimate yet, I may recommend just playing the original Wii version for now. I give this game four rings out of a Jade Ghost Wisp. Alright, now everyone who skipped to the end just to see the score will have to watch the rest of the video to figure out what the fuck that means.